Hi everyone, this is David Hoffman from David's Been Here. If you've been subscribed to me for a while, you know that I love Indian street food. I visited India twice this year, back in February of 2018 and now in November. And so far I've done 13 cities and probably, I don't know, maybe 100, 180 dishes. I mean, I really have gone deep into the cuisine of India. I went to so many cities from Mumbai to Chennai, Kolkata, Amritsar, uh, Pune. I mean, I got, I've done 14 incredible cities and the food has blown my mind. I've sampled veg, non-veg, sweet, savory, spicy, crispy, crunchy, creamy, and spongy. I have had dishes that were every bit as incredible as I thought they would be, and ones that shocked me with complexity and their textures and dynamic flavor profiles. And I want to share all these dishes with you guys. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell to get updated when all the new videos drop. Now you guys ready for the top 19 Indian street food dishes you have to try in 2019? Let's dive into it. Up first is butter chicken from Aslam Chicken Corner in the capital city of Delhi. This chicken is made solely with chicken, butter, and spices, which makes it a little different from other types of butter chicken, which usually include tomatoes, but this dish is still phenomenal. The chicken is roasted over hot coals and served piping hot and swimming in a puddle of rich, flavorful butter. The chicken itself is very crispy, almost like chicharron or pork rinds, and the butter is so smooth. It's super fatty, but trust me, this chicken is worth breaking any diet. Next up is the sensational buffalo biryani I had at Molde Tufik in the back streets of Delhi. Biryani is a layered rice dish that can contain tomatoes, green chilies, garlic, saffron, cardamom, coriander, and more, and can be served veg or with your choice of protein, like chicken, goat, or lamb. With this biryani, the buffalo meat and the rice were cooked separately in a giant pot with a layer of meat on the bottom and rice on top. The buffalo was tender and juicy, and its sauce mixed with spices in the rice had me in Indian heaven. I had never had buffalo biryani before, and now that I had it, I didn't want to stop eating it. Before I visited the world famous Taj Mahal in the city of Agra, I had a quick breakfast with my guide Shanu, and we tried a dish called Bedai, which blew me away. It's served with a puffy flatbread called Badai Puri that's served with a potato curry and contains cottage cheese. It's eaten by tearing pieces of puri, dipping it into the curry, and popping it into your mouth. The puri itself had lentils and spices baked right into it, and it was outstanding. Combining it with the potato curry, which had a tiny bit of spice to it, took it to a whole new level. When I visited Lucknow, also known as the city of Nawabs, I was feeling really under the weather. But that didn't stop me and my friend Aishu from enjoying one of the best meat dishes I've ever had in India, kebabs at Tunde Kebabi. These spice filled pan fried meatballs are soft and a little mushy and exploding with flavor. They were served with raw onions, a wedge of lime and an Indian flatbread called a paratha. The spices in the meat and the different flavors and textures with the paratha and the onion were perfectly balanced. These kebabs were easily some of the best meatballs I've ever had in my life. During my time in the holy city of Varanasi, my friend Himanshu took me on an epic food tour on my last day in the city. The very last food I tried on the tour is a dish called Chura Matar, which was one of the menu items I tried at Dina Chat, a roadside stall. Chura Matar can be made a few different ways and can contain ingredients like rice, green beans, green peas, cumin, green chilies, cashews, ginger, coriander, garam masala, and dried fruits. This fantastic dish, which is mixed up and cooked on a sizzle, is very light and fresh, and was one of my favorite things I tried in the holy city of Varanasi. The next dish on my list is a sensational Rajasthani dish called Gate Ki Sabzi, which I tried as I explored the city of Jaipur with my friend and guide, Atre. This mouth-watering curry is made with chickpea flour, which is formed into dumplings that are then served in a spicy, flavorful curd gravy. I had this dish alongside dal, aloo paz sabzi, and bajad ki roti. There were so many layers of flavors and beautiful contrasting textures once all these dishes were combined. And the hint of spice that creeps up on you was a nice surprise in an already fantastic dish. Up next is the traditional Rajasthani Thali I had at Torba restaurant in the city of Jaipur with my friend Karan. Thali is a name for a large platter of various Indian foods that are eaten together and contain various breads, rice, and different dishes depending on which part of the country you're in. For this outstanding vegetarian Thali, my waiter crumbled a large ball of bread on my plate and then began mixing in various curries and yogurts. 
I was grateful that it wasn't very spicy as my stomach was still recovering from a long week of illness, but it was packed with ridiculous amount of flavor and was very different from the northern Indian food I had earlier that trip. If you're ever in Jaipur, then you have to try this tally, it's incredible. The next Indian dish you have to try is the mutton burger from Samode Palace in the city of Samode. While it may not exactly count as a street food, it was too good to leave off this list. This was a monster of a burger with a large juicy mutton or sheep meat patty topped with lettuce, onions, tomato and cheese. The mutton was fresh and tender and if I hadn't known what it was, I would have thought it was an incredible chicken burger. You have to try this burger, it was fantastic. The next Indian street food dish you have to try in 2019 is the chicken lollipop, a dish I first tried on Muhammad Ali Road in Mumbai with my friend Yash. This unbelievable chicken dish gets its name because when you hold the drumstick upright by the bone, it resembles a lollipop. The fried drumstick is covered in a red curry that is so rich and colorful, it actually turns the chicken bright red. The chicken lollipops I tried weren't too spicy, but were incredibly flavorful. They were even better when I dipped them into the tangy ginger sauce they were served with. If you love chicken, you'll love this dish. Next, we have a very popular dish called Pani Puri, which I have now tried many variations throughout my two trips in India. But one of my favorites was still the first one I tried at the Elko restaurant in the Bandra neighborhood of Mumbai. Pani Puri consists of a round, hollow ball of crisp fried bread called a puri, which the cook punctures and fills with a light soup or curry that can contain potatoes, tamarind, chutney, chilies, chickpeas, chaat masala, onion, and more. This particular one was dipped into two different chutneys with a minty flavor. The chutney was so amazing that even after the puris were gone, I made sure to drink every last drop on the tray. It was that good. The next street food you have to try is the paneer chili I had on Yuhu Beach in Mumbai with my friends Tanmay and Priyanka from the Tripping Travelers. This is a popular Indo-Chinese dish that is made of cubes of deep fried cottage cheese called paneer as well as lots of Chinese sauces and vegetables including bell pepper and spring onions. I was told it would be extremely hot because one of the ingredients is chili paste, but I didn't really find it extremely spicy, a little hot. Then again, maybe I fried all my taste buds with the incredibly spicy foods I tried during my first trip in India. This fresh and insanely flavorful dish is one of my all time favorite Indian dishes and is an absolute must try if you're ever on Yuhu Beach. If you're ever in Pune and you want an extremely culinary experience and you have to go to the House of Paratha restaurant and try the Bahubali Tali. This is no ordinary tali. Built as the biggest tali in the entire city, this massive dish contains a 22 inch paratha that is stuffed with cheese, nuts and vegetables as well as 7 vegetable curries and a variety of breads, 2 desserts and several sides. There are so many incredible flavors that range from earthy to tropical to spicy and contrasting textures of breads, paratha and curries was like heaven in my mouth. Not only is this one of Pune's biggest foods, it's also one of the city's best. Next up are two dishes that are so ridiculously amazing that I honestly couldn't choose one of them. The pizza dosa and the Szechuan cream dosa I tried at Ramki Bandi in Hyderabad with my buddy Sam and Silish. The Italian inspired pizza dosa tastes a lot like a pizza with a crispy dosa acting almost like a crust and lots of tomatoes and melted cheese. It also had a spicy kick to it which was balanced by the cooling and refreshing coconut chutney it was served with. The Szechuan cream dosa infused the dosa with traditional Chinese flavors. This phenomenal dosa contained lots of onions and cilantro and was sweeter than the pizza dosa but also had a nice kick to it. It was phenomenal. I couldn't stop raving about how great it was and once you try it, I know you won't be able to either. The next Indian food on our list is also in the city of Hyderabad at the famous Paradise Restaurant. There my buddy Sam and I tried 4 different biryanis including mutton, chicken and egg. So you might be surprised to learn that my favorite was actually the veg biryani which contained beans, peas and non-melting Indian cottage cheese called the paneer. The mix of paneer with the yellow curry, vegetables and spices was next level and makes this one of my favorite biryanis of all time. The beautiful and spiritual city of Amritsar will always be a special place to me. Not only because of the stunning attractions and warm friendly people but also because of the street food dishes like the next one on my list. The paneer burji at Tara Chand which is made up of cottage cheese, butter and vegetables. My friend Deepak explained that it also includes a secret masala recipe that the cooks won't share with anyone. Paneer buji is very heavy and creamy and filled with herbs and spices. 
It was like cheesy, buttery, scrambled eggs, except there are no eggs. The mint chutney it was paired with took it from exceptional to astronomical in terms of flavors. If you're a cheese lover like me, this dish is a must. The next Indian street food dish you absolutely have to try is floating pani puri, which can be found on one of the most famous roads in Bangalore, Vivi Puram Food Street. I went there with my friend Sam and Abhishek and I was blown away by this glorious variation of a dish I already love so much. This time, the filled booties are served in a plate with Jaljira water. It was a little spicy and was packed with bright, fresh flavors and had me salivating. This was definitely one of my best pani puris I've ever had in my life. For our next dish, you have to head over to Marina Beach in the city of Chennai for some fried calamari or squid with curry. After the raw squid is cleaned and sliced into rings, it is also added to a pan along with herbs, spices like garlic, ginger, tamarind, garam masala, chili powder, salt, black pepper, curry leaves, and lemon juice before all those ingredients are mixed together and sauteed. The end result is a spicy and insanely flavorful seafood dish that made my mouth go wild. The briny flavor of the squid coupled with all the spices had me in Tamil heaven. As you guys know, I'm a total foodie, so I couldn't go to Kolkata without visiting Nizam's, the birthplace of the next street food on our list, the Kathy Roll. Kathy Rolls consist of fatty, grilled kebabs that are wrapped in chewy, delicious, and layered parathas. This dish was invented when the cooks of Nizam's restaurant decided they had to find a way for people to take their kebabs on a go, which wasn't very practical for commuters at the time. The care that went into developing this dish is evident in the sensational flavors in the moist, spice-filled meat and the tender, eggy paratha. It was out of this world. The final dish on this list comes from the city of Ahmedabad, which is famous for its vegetarian cuisine. This is the Gujarati Thali, which I tried with my buddy Sam at Agashia. Many of the items served in the Gujarati Thali have a slightly sweet flavor to them and includes basmati rice, an incredible lentil dish called Kati Mithi Dal, a vegetable and spinach paste called Undiyu, a fantastic eggplant dish called Ringana Metli Nu Shak, and lots and lots of chutneys among others. Like every tally I've ever had, this dish has so many wonderful complementary and contrasting flavors and textures that took my taste buds on a wild roller coaster ride that I didn't want to get off. This was truly Gujarati food heaven. And those were the 19 Indian street food dishes you have to try in 2019. If you find yourself traveling throughout India this year, definitely go to these cities and try these dishes. They are so incredibly delicious. I gotta say, all the tallies blew my mind. Man, all the non-veg dishes and the veg dishes. I mean, the pani puris are my favorites of all time. You can call me the puri god now. And if you guys love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, and subscribe to my channel for more awesome travel content. I'll see you on the next travel food adventure around the world. Where have you been? Peace.